morning, everyone. I'm going to ask you quickly just to raise your hands if you cannot hear. Well, <laughs> obviously, if you cannot hear me, you cannot raise your hand. But if you are getting your sound and you can hear my voice, just raise your hand so that we know. It's at 10 for the time. Oh, it's at 10. I thought it was, I looked at my calendar, it said 9.30. Huh. Right. Well, I got things I got to do really quick. Okay. I'll be right back. Good. Well, you can uh, hang up the phone. I thought we were late. Oh, I got it. <laughs>
Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. We'll be starting at 10 o'clock. While we're waiting, uh, if you have good sound, good audio, and you can hear our voices, just use the raise your hand feature and let us know. Great, thank you. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us this morning on today's webinar on the East Bay Fund for Artists and How to Apply. I'm Nicole Kayak, and I'll be your point of contact this year for the East Bay Fund for Artists. Any questions you have and administering the process as we go through the um, time period together. I am pleased to be joined by my colleague Don Robinson, who will be providing um, some assistance through this uh, webinar. Good morning, everyone. I'm Dawn, and I just want to make sure that everyone on the call knows that you can type your questions as Nicole is taking you through the information. Type your questions into the question box, and at the end of the call, we will go through all the questions, read them aloud, and answer as many of them as time permits. Great. So we're going to go ahead and go over the agenda. We'll be reviewing the eligibility process, timelines, the match process, and have ample time for questions and answers. This, record, this call will be recorded and available on our website, and there will also be additional PDFs and attachments available that we'll send to you following this call this afternoon. So let's jump in. I'll first review the eligibility for the East Bay Fund for Artists, and all of the eligibility information is on our website, and we'll show you the links in a couple of slides. We are committed to supporting East Bay artists and arts organizations, so you must be located in the East Bay if you're an organization commissioning a Bay Area artist or an artist that's living in the East Bay, and you must have a fiscal sponsor. Your fiscal sponsor does not have to be in the Bay Area, and later in the presentation, we'll talk a little bit about fiscal sponsorship. Some people have asked about what's eligible, and we have historically supported theater, film, dance, music, murals, visual artists, um, and if you have questions, we'll provide an email address that you can submit some specific questions as well. So on this next slide, you can see the links to our application and full guidelines that's available online. And again, we'll have these links available to you. Oftentimes, we'll get a question if you should apply as an organization or as an individual artist, and it really is about who's truly leading the work who's commissioning the project, and whose donor base you're looking to expand. So if you are an organization that is really leading the work, we suggest that you apply as an organization. If you're an individual artist who's really um, doing a lot of the bulk of the planning and the fund development, we recommend you apply as an artist. 
there are some similarities in the application. The major difference being that the time period that you can raise funds, because we understand and recognize that individual artists don't have a full development team or staff to help support the fundraising process. Um, again, if you have questions around this, we're happy to answer some specific questions. Um, but we're really looking at who is really leading the work in advancing this commission fund. This next slide, if there's anything that you take away from this webinar today, really is the most important slide. And it's the question around what is the panel looking for? So as you have seen probably from reviewing the website, this East Bay Fund for Artists Fund is really committed to the creation of new work and supporting individual artists. And they'll be looking for these key pieces. They'll be looking for your connection to the artistic practice for the organization or the individual artist. And they'll be making sure that the amount that you're requesting for is the amount that you're paying the lead artist directly. So we know that artists aren't always paid for the projects that they're working on. And so we have to make sure that in your budget and in the request, the amount that you are asking for matches the amount that you are paying the lead artist. And the lead artist really is the one who is the um, one who's taking the lead on the project, um, and it is up to $8,000. The other piece that the panel will be looking for is the expansion of your individual donor base. And we'll be looking very specifically at how you plan to make the match. So we hope that in your proposal, you'll spend time in the narrative to talk about your plan, um, as well as how it connects to your artistic practice. Lastly, the panel will be looking for your description of how you plan to engage with the community and your audience. Um, and the budget will be reviewed to see if it's realistic and aligns with the proposal and plans uh, that you plan to present. This next slide on the work sample is a question that we get about a lot. And this really is important to provide the panel a sense and best representation of your work and how it fits with the project that you hope to commission. It will provide a context to the panel. And we ask for one or two work samples per lead artist that best represent your work. If you're looking to submit a video, you can send it as a .mp4 or a .mov. We ask that each are no more than three minutes long, and you can email them to us via email, send it via Dropbox, you send it Hightail. Or if you plan to mail it as a CD, we ask that you make sure that it is submitted to the address that's listed on this slide and that uh, is postmarked by the deadline February 1st. If you plan to submit photos, we ask that you submit it on a PowerPoint presentation with a caption and one photo per slide. We've had some questions if you're a symphony, for example, how you should submit. And if it is relevant and relates to the project, you may submit a piece from the symphony, although it's not required. And I'll briefly go over the timeline next. So the timeline, as you know, for the deadline is February 1st, 2016 at 11.59 PM. <laughs> we um, will be taking time to review all of the applications. We will not accept full, we will only accept full proposals. So please make sure to check in the checklist that you have all of the pieces of the application. And the panel will be reviewing everything towards the end of March, which is when we'll notify all applicants. There's been a question about how to raise the match, which is a one-to-one. -one, and that means for every dollar that you raise, the East Bay Fund for Artists will match that amount up to the award amount. And this must be raised after notification. So towards the end of March, you will be given a timeline to raise those dollars. If it's an organization, April to, through June, and for artists, April through July. And you'll see here that we have listed the, date, the dates when we would ask the list of individual donors um, to be submitted to the foundation so that we can process the match on our end. The grant will be processed to the nonprofit organization or your fiscal sponsor within a month after you submit your match spreadsheet and server response. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. And please remember that the match amount must match the amount that you are giving to your commissioned individual artist. 
On the next slide, I'll talk a little bit about how to make the match and the gifts that are eligible. We get a lot of questions about this. The gifts that are eligible are individual gifts. As I mentioned, we're really committed to supporting your ability to raise individual donors who will be able to be longtime supporters of your work. We'll also consider family-run, local, small business contributions. These could be um, individual families that have a small business. If you have questions about this, certainly let us know. But as you'll see on the slide, we will not match in-kind foundation, government, or corporate gifts. One of the things that we get asked a lot is, are we going to help with making the match? Are we going to provide information on how? And so we are pleased to say that we did ask our past grantees for advice on what they'd want to share with you as prospective applicants to this East Bay Fund for Artists. So here are the tips that they shared with us. They said, start with people you know, connect on a personal level, tell a story that they can relate to, leverage crowdfunding, Kickstarter, Indiegogo, Hatch Fund, leverage social media, host an event, and really leverage the award. The number one thing that we hear from the surveys that we get from our past grantees is that the East Bay Fund for Artists Award is truly an opportunity to be able to leverage the visibility and the limited time frame to activate your individual supporters. We're really pleased to be able to also share that we have a research report that includes specific strategies that our past grantees have used to raise individual dollars towards um, supporting their work. We really encourage you to reach out to new donors and existing donors to give more than their historical gift amount. We certainly know that you could ask one person to match $8,000, but that really isn't the intent of the fund. So we really want to make sure that in your narrative proposal that the panel sees how you plan to activate your individual donor base and raise funds to support this work. The next slide will talk about what happens after you make the match. We'll send you an Excel spreadsheet if you're selected, and that is where you will submit to us a list of your donors. One of the things that we are pleased to be able to do is in send individualized thank yous to your list of donors as well. We don't provide the tax deductibility um, confirmation that will come from your fiscal sponsor if you're an individual artist um, or from the organization that you're working with. Um, and we will also ask you to submit an online survey that we will send to you once you're selected. We'll also ask you to confirm the date of your East Bay premiere Please note that it's an East Bay location that we require, and it's required within a year of making the match, and hope that you'll invite us and keep us updated. We're really pleased to be able to be supported by very generous individual donors who want to support the, the arts and individual artists, as well as the William and Flora Hewlett Foundation, and we always share individual artists and organization premieres with our staff, our board, and our supporters to help support the vibrancy of the East Bay. One other note about the list of your donors, we won't share the individual donor contact information. If we were to, we absolutely would let you know, but we do not share it beyond sending a thank you acknowledgement letter that comes directly from our offices. This last slide on fiscal sponsorship, because this question comes up oftentimes for individual artists and organizations that might not have their own 501c3 status, fiscal sponsorship is required although your fiscal sponsor does not have to be located in the East Bay. On this slide, you'll see that we have some recommendations that fiscal, fiscal sponsor organizations, including Fractured Atlas, Intersection for the Arts, Pro Arts, Dancers Group, Summer Arts, and many local nonprofits also provide sponsorship to a number of smaller projects. And so if you've worked with someone in the past, we certainly can recommend that you contact an organization to see if they might be a fiscal agent for you. And a fiscal sponsor is the one that will provide the 501c3 tax deductibility for your individual donors, the tracking, and the financial record keeping for you. If you want a complete fiscal sponsorship list and have specific individualized questions, we have our email address on this last slide here, ebfa at eastbaycf.org. And that's ebfa at eastbaycf.org. Um, and my colleague Don has been dutifully checking our questions and will take some time now to answer your questions that you have for us. Great. Oh, nice job, Nicole. Let's look at some questions. 
Let's see what we can see. All right. Let's this to be bigger. There we go. Let's look at these in a in a bigger way and talk about them one by one. Sounds like at the beginning we had a little problem getting uh, the slides up. Uh, you guys weren't seeing them, but then we resolved that. Uh, I'm looking at the very first question here, and it reads, can artist fees exceed the $8,000 grant award? Great question. So absolutely, the artist fees can absolutely exceed the $8,000. The $8,000 is just our maximum amount that we are able to match as part of the East Bay Fund for Artist Fund. If you, say, have an artist fee that's $12,000, certainly include that in your budget and show in the itemized income and revenue as well as expenses how you'll cover the balance of the $4,000, for example. Great, Karen. Your next question was, can donations from local business improvement district community groups, a collection of independent local businesses, apply to the matching funds? That's a great question. So if the individual business, develop, business group is providing the contact information for those businesses and you're able to steward and cultivate them moving forward, um, I would accept that for this round. Fantastic. Uh, Leora asks, do individual artists need to procure individual donors to match or only procure organizations? One more time, sorry. Do individual artists need to procure individual donors for a match or only organizations? Oh, great question. So organizations and individual artists both will be raising individual donation matches. So whether you're an organization or individual artist, we are asking for the match to be raised by individual donors. Great. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Nina asks if in-kind support, uh, such as marketing in a large mailing by a local nonprofit organization, count as a match for the fund? So in-kind foundation, government, and corporate dollars would not count towards the match. All right, Nina, if you have more questions, you can always connect with Nicole at the email address edfa at eastacf.org. Uh, Rebecca asks if, wait a second, uh, Rebecca, do all individual donations to match the grant have to come in after the notification date? Yes. So the point of the fund really is to leverage this as an opportunity to leverage the match from the East Bay Fund for Artists, and we'll include language around how to do that. So it must come in during that match period, that April through June or April through July, depending on if you're applying as an individual artist or organization. Aubrey, I see you've rung in there. How are you? Good to see you on this call. Uh, Aubrey is from, uh, is a California Symphony, Aubrey, uh, taking, asking the question, if the organization can use East Bay Gives to help leverage individual donors. For example, if we wrote our East Bay Gives profile in a way that suggested some of the donations received that day would support this specific project, is that acceptable? Thank you, Aubrey, for that question. I feel like you were a plant for us, because so that's something that we <laughs> wanted to make sure we wanted to address. So yes, absolutely. This is actually really good timing for us. Um, if you are an organization who is interested in leveraging the East Bay Gives opportunity, we'll actually include details in the confirmation email this afternoon as well. Um, you definitely can use East Bay Gives as the online platform to raise your individual donor match. Uh, great question. Thank you very much for that. Uh, ben, for the grant to individual artists, are we working off a budget with the upper limit of 16000 some of which will be for the artist fees and some for production. Is that accurate? So, good question, Ben. 16000 definitely is not the minimum or maximum. It really is the amount that we have available to be able to match uh, our organizations and artist grants. Um, we've had budgets, budgets that are smaller, larger than the $16,000. We really want to see a true reflection of what it costs to raise the project that you're asking to commission. So if it's $20,000 or $50,000, we just ask that you itemize all of that in your budget so the panel can see what it would cost to be able to produce your work. Great. Risa asks, if a grant could go towards one phase of a multi-phase project, for example, a performance in the East Bay followed by an expanded version in a venue outside of the East Bay. So we are very clear about the commissioning of new work. 
And so I'm not sure if this is the beginning of the first phase or the second phase. So you can certainly talk with me afterwards. I'm happy to talk over the phone or through email about your specific project, but want to be very clear to everyone on the phone that this is very specifically a fund to commission new work. And so we'll want to make sure that in your project narrative that you're talking specifically about the new work and how it fits in with your artistic practice. Great. Jennifer wants to know if we have a list of the previous grantees on the website. We uh, will definitely include the list of the rounds 1 through 16 past grants um, to share with you. Um, if you have any specific questions about the grantees, we're happy to answer those as well. Sorry, there was another sign on the thing else. We've got, we've got a live artist here with us right now. Isn't that great? Um, let me continue with these questions. And uh, let me see. Karen we wants to know um, if images in the PDF, uh, in the PDF along with the PowerPoint, do we want images? Uh, yes. So if you can send your images in a PowerPoint, presentation separately, that would be greatly appreciated. What ends up happening is during the panel process, we run a PowerPoint presentation for our panelists, and it's easier for us to click through them. So I would suggest that you submit your PDF that includes the narrative and the budget, and then the separate PDF, excuse me, the separate PowerPoint presentation that would include the images. So one slide would have one image with a caption. Great. OK. Uh, Risa wants to know, does it strengthen a proposal? to have multiple performance venues, uh, for example, um, a theater and one or more public schools? Great question. So we, I think as a panel, haven't necessarily uh, prioritized multiple venues or a single venue. They're really looking at how the venue fits in with your proposed um, piece of work. So that's the question around the audience and how you connect with them will be a way that you can talk about how the venue is a good fit for your project. Um, if you have multiple venues, that won't give you an advantage or disadvantage as long as it's located in the East Bay within one year of the match is the piece that they'll be looking for. Okay. Um, ben, I think you asked part of this question before, but you also wanted to know if uh, any of the funds can go to production. So the funds that you raise from the individual donors can go to any piece of the project. The $8,000 is the only, or the up to $8,000 is the only piece that we ask go directly to the individual artist. So when you're raising the match dollars from the individual donors or local small businesses, those can certainly go to other pieces of your project. Great. Andrea wants to know how many uh, individual indie artists apply each year and how many are funded? That's a great question. So. Um, it really varies year to year, so the statistics won't help you so much. I will say that in 2014, the decline rate was only 24%. In 2015, the decline rate was 72%. So you can see that because this is an open application process, it really depends on the number that actually apply. That will dictate the available um, amount that we can grant out. Um, and so I don't know that the statistic will be as helpful since it's an open application process, um, except to say that we encourage folks to submit your best application and that the panelists really have a really strong commitment to supporting a diverse array of projects that rep really represent the East Bay um, and are really committed to supporting individual artists, small arts organizations who are looking to commission new work. Great. Uh, ben also wants to find out how much, what's the time frame, um, how much time is given to an organization to raise the match? Sure. So the time to raise the match is April through June as an organization. And we'll make sure you have the full slide deck after this call and webinar so that you can have the timeline it's, uh, listed out in one of the slides that might be helpful for you if you have that as a reference. Great. Uh, TC asks, uh, says, I'm a performance poet in the process of creating a one-woman show based on my transformational poetry. Does this fit the bill? Sure. Yes, absolutely. Great. Uh, that wouldn't be eligible. John, uh, your question is, if I want to make a multimedia installation, is that cool? Very cool. All right. 
Uh, Rebecca, is there a preference for established artists over emerging artists? So there is no preference. It really is about how this fits into your artistic practice. I know I've said that a little bit before, but the panel will be really looking for the narrative, and if it's an individual artist, it'll be in your narrative. If you're an organization, it'll be in the artistic artist statement. They're really, really looking to see how this fits in with your work. So um, that statement is a really important piece and window for the panel to see how this fits in with your artistic and creative growth. Uh, this is cool. Lisa uh, has a comment. The independent arts and media, independent arts and media in San Francisco, is currently accepting applications for fiscal sponsorship. Applications received by January 20th, which is uh, at the end of this long weekend, pretty much, would be reviewed in time uh, for the EBFA February grant deadline. So that's good thing. That's a good thing to know. Um, and if you have questions, you might want to reach out to independent arts and media in San Francisco. Great. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks, Lisa. Uh, the next question is about the project period. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we may have just talked about this, Nina, but I want to make sure we covered your covered your uh, question in full. Um, is the date of the match considered June or July when we raise the matching funds, or in April when you extend EBCF's portion? So you can make the match between April and June if you're an organization. The spreadsheet will be due July 20th. And then for artists, the match period is April through July with the spreadsheet due August 19th. Now, we're not a government entity. If for some reason your last match comes July 1st, we can talk to you about that. We um, oftentimes get a question about what if I don't make the match. I will say in our many years of doing this since 2004, we have had only one project not make their match. So we as a team are really supportive in making sure that you can make your match. And as a panel, are looking very closely at your match process that you are proposing to make sure that it seems realistic um, and possible for you to attain to be able to support the work that you want to create. Uh, great. Karen uh, has a comment. Our project will be on Caltrans property, and we are currently working with them to secure approvals. Does that come into, under consideration? Great question. So for any public works, if um, you are doing something with Caltrans, we do require the letter stating that you have approval. So we have been doing this for many years. I've been here since 2008. One of the most important pieces with any public art is a permit or a letter of commitment. If it's a public building, for example, and it's a mural, we do require that um, as one of the questions in the narrative that we'll want to make sure is addressed for the panel as they review your project. So thank you for that question. Great. Anna asks, uh, regarding the application process, one, should the PowerPoint and Excel files be submitted as PowerPoint and Excel files? and not included in combined or combined in a single PDF? Great question. So um, the PowerPoint presentation we would love to have as a separate PowerPoint, please, um, because we're combining it as multiple PowerPoint presentation slides for the panel to click through. Uh, for the PDF and the Excel spreadsheet, you can send those as separate or together, whatever is easiest for you. But the PowerPoint, we want to make sure it's separate. Well, and Nicole, correct me if I'm wrong, but all of this information is on the EBFA artist eligibility correct. page yeah. on, on our website. So when you get, uh, you'll be receiving an email at the end of this webinar that directs you to the EBFA page where this recording will be available for review, um, as well as the handouts that Nicole has prepared. So most of these uh, procedural questions about uh, about things like format are answered there. Correct. Uh, let me get on with the next question here. Um, Nina, your question was about when your project must take place. Oh, I see. Within the year, within a year of being awarded. Correct. Is that right? Okay. okay so we've um, given a little bit of flexibility. We recognize that um, and want to make sure that your project is successful. So one year um, after um, the match period is acceptable. We are a little bit loose with that. Um, we just want to make sure that's in, within a year. And it really has more to do with making sure that you're able to communicate with your individual donors and steward them through the process. So we encourage you to, as much as you're telling us about the premieres, also keep your individual donors up to date um, so that they can also be uh, supporters of the work when it becomes available. 
Great. Ben, uh, the organization, ben says the, the organization that is interested in commissioning me to create a work for them is a nonprofit school for Indian scriptural studies. Is there any restriction on the type of nonprofit organization that can apply? We don't have any restrictions on the nonprofit, no. Well, that's good news. Uh, Karen, uh, we have an actual artist artwork proposal ready for this project. Should we provide that imagery along with existing samples of the artist's work? Sure. Sure. Okay. Submit whatever is most representing the work that you're commissioning or seeking to commission um, and demonstrates the artist that you're looking to commission. Um, we, I should say for the question before, um, we are pretty open in who is applying as far as organizations go, but note that the panel really is looking at supporting arts organizations or organizations that have a very specific arts component if it's an organization um, that's applying. Um, because of our limited funds. Great. Uh, Ayadel, I hope I didn't um, massacre your name there. Um, what are the requirements of fiscal sponsors? Can you go over that again? Uh, sure, sure. So the fiscal sponsors, um, especially those who have a fiscal sponsor program, will have their own kind of guidelines and information as far as what they'll provide you. The key pieces that we'll be looking forward for specifically um, is that they will be able to provide the financial back end for your work. Some fiscal sponsors have additional support for individual artists. It might include workshops on how to raise individual donor funds. It might include support with grant writing. Um, and so each fiscal sponsor and fiscal agent is slightly different. And we'll be happy to provide a list of that very specifically. But other than that, um, we don't have any specific requirements other that they are agreeing and have a letter showing that they're agreeing to act as your fiscal agent to receive the funds from your match as well as individual donors that individual donors, donor funds that you're raising. Great. Andrea, I hope that you in the course of these questions have gotten your question answered about what types of indie artists are eligible for a grant. But all of the eligibility requirements again are listed on our website. And uh, it's pretty easy to get there and, and go through all of that. So if, if, if that information doesn't cover uh, or answer your question, then please get in touch with us. Uh, another question here, what defines a new work? Can it be derivative of early work presented in a fuller form, as in a piece done as a reading, now commissioned as a full work inspired by the reading? Great question. So we have um, been trying to figure out what new work means to the panel. And we really are flipping that question to you as an individual artist to really be able to describe how this will advance your artistic practice. So if it is an advancement of work that you are already doing, we would be really interested in seeing how this is a new piece for you. Um, if it is just a part two, um, it, the panel won't be as interested in supporting that. But if it really is a strong, um, addition, growth, or departure from the original work that you've done in the past, uh, the panel would certainly be interested in that. And I'd be happy to talk with you individually for some specifics. I know it's hard to do it on the webinar. Great. Um, John wants to know, if you want to show the commissioned work in a non-traditional space, such as a storefront, mm -hmm. uh, does there have to be a specific venue for the for the premiere? Yeah, great question. So we do ask for a specific location in the proposal. So you'll see in the electronic cover sheet, which is new this year, that there is a field that asks specifically where your venue is. And so we need to know exactly where it is. Uh, we recognize that that might change, but we're hoping that that will help ensure um, we know where you're looking to present that in the East Bay very specifically. Very cool. Uh, I have one more question here, um, or no. No, I have one more. Um, with one's budget, can it include honorariums for collaborating artists? So in the past, we've had questions around lead artist fees, supporting fees. We really want to make sure that our funds are going to the lead artist. So this is the person who is being commissioned to create the new work. If there are two lead artists, then I would make sure that you really articulate that. Um, we can talk over the phone or via email about this a little bit more, but just want to really um, reaffirm to everyone on the call and webinar this morning that we really are looking to support the lead artists, the ones who are really creating the new work. Um, and 
we'll be looking for that information very specifically in the narrative in the artist statement as well as the resume. Great. I noticed a couple other questions. Anna, the part two of your question uh, about one or two work samples, does that apply to photos of visual artwork? So still just one or two. So that's a good question. Um, with the photos, where we have a little bit more leeway because it won't take us three minutes to go through one photo. Um, I think that 10, 15 would be appropriate. I would really choose the ones that you feel like best represent the work. We try not to have such strict guidelines. Um, and so we want to be flexible to be able to provide some space, but we also don't want you to, you know, provide tons to us because we want to have a few that will best represent your work and allow the panel to be able to go through all of the samples pretty equitably. Great. Karen, a couple more. Um, are organizations and individual artists in the same applicant pool? They are. So if you're trying to leverage and see whether or not it's more beneficial to apply as an organization or an artist, the pot of funds are the same pot of funds. So you won't have an advantage applying for one or the other. We really are looking to see who the lead entity is in creating this new piece of work. So thank you for that question. Also, can the artist, the lead artist fees exceed the $8,000 grant award limit? Absolutely. So if your artist, say commissioning fee is $20,000, that's absolutely appropriate and acceptable. We just will only include our support for up to the $8,000 amount. Uh, I thought I saw something else about the Caltrans letter, and I, I want to make sure that we uh, don't cut anyone short. Uh, if Caltrans provided a letter of commitment for a project pending agreement with the city on maintenance agreements, would that suffice? Uh, let's talk offline. We have a really long history with Caltrans and the city of Oakland, um, and it's a little bit complicated. So I'd be happy to talk with you offline um, and, and see what would be appropriate. So I don't want to not answer your question, but it's a little bit more than the call um, and what everyone would probably need to hear. Great. Um, so that so that you all understand, um, that's, if, if there are more things that seem very specific to your work or to your organization, these are offline questions that you want to ask. I think that uh, I've gone through the questions that have been typed in. Does anyone have anything else they want to add here? Uh, we're super happy to have uh, 30, 30 participants on this call today. That's great. Yeah, I'd like to reiterate John's comments and really thank you for joining us this morning. We're so excited to have you um, join us and ask your questions and make sure that you know that we as staff are available to answer your questions and so can email us at any time. Um, as I mentioned, we've been doing this since 2004, and so you're joining a really exciting group of folks. Since 2004, we've supported 176 projects, 258 artists, over 8,000 donors, um, $1.1 million from EVCF and our donors, including the Hewlett Foundation as well as some others, um, and that has leveraged $1.4 million in individual donors raised. So as you can tell, our individual donors far exceed the amount that um, we've given up as grants to the fund. And so the last thing I'll say is in the match, if you say are able to raise $10,000 and awarded eight, we'd love to hear about that. And we're happy to send the letters to all of your donors saying that you were able to fully leverage the match amount. Fantastic. Um, I think that we've covered everything it, that we plan to cover. Don't forget um, this recording and the handouts will be available uh, later today on our website, and all the participants who attended this call will get the email with a link for that directly, um, and then you'll have a chance to study it. You don't have to wait for me, however. You can just go to uh, www.ebcf.org and uh, look on the right-hand side. Uh, there's a link to something that says, Do the Arts Touch You? And you can click there, and it'll take you through to some EBFA content, and you should be able to find your way there. Um, the recording won't be up until later, but you'll still be able to look at eligibility requirements and artist and organization application forms. Great. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thank, a special thanks to my colleague Don for helping field all the questions and joining all of you and us this morning. So thanks so much, and we look forward to seeing some wonderful applications this time around. Good luck, everyone. Thanks so much.